Oh, look at that pretty variegated leaf. Isn't that lovely? That is, uh, which pepper is this? It's not fish pepper. Darn it, candy cane. I bought these, started already, and they're called candy cane, and they're a variegated leaf with a variegated pepper. Isn't that beautiful? So I was having a problem with my peppers um, where the top branches were curled up really hard. And the only thing that I know for sure that causes that is like a pesticide damage. So with these all curling like that, um, like I said, it could have, it could potentially be pesticide drift. Sometimes if you see something that looks like pesticide damage on your plants, um, and you know you haven't sprayed anything, you can't really count out pesticide damage just because you probably live close enough to people. Um, if you live in a town that sprays the ditches and or the easements in front of your house, uh, pesticides can end up in your garden, unfortunately, unless you live very isolated. That can happen. Uh, it's very unlikely that that's what it was here, just because we don't have anybody really around us um, but it, it could be it could be something like that I my guess is more likely that because we've had some really crazy temperature fluctuations and we have nights that are still 50 degrees and high temperatures during the day that are averaging out around 90 um, my guess is probably that the plants were just a little stressed. I really think when it comes to troubleshooting, it's really good to be a part of some sort of gardening community. That's why we created our Facebook page because it, it helps you troubleshoot things to be able to post a picture and say, does anybody know what's going on here? Because so often it really can be a number of things. Sometimes you're gonna post a picture and ask about an insect or insect damage or something that your plant is doing or some sort of sickness or disease or problem. And it's gonna be a really straightforward answer. It's definitely this one thing. Sometimes, however, it could be a number of things. Sometimes you never really know 100% for sure what happened. I do like to take a fairly laid back approach though and not just freak out right away. Like it was kind of concerning to see, see a lot of these are actually curling really hard just like that other bed was, but the other bed is now straightened out. So I don't know for sure what's causing it, but um, I feel like it's probably not going to keep me from getting tomatoes. I left a few more faciated blossoms this year than I normally do just because so many of them have been so massive and gnarly. Uh, these climbing triple crop plants can grow some really monster tomatoes and so I left a few of those to see about getting some really big tomatoes but I took a lot of them off as well. For those of you who are gardening for the first year, congratulations, very proud of you and so glad that you're getting uh, getting into the gardening game. It's such a valuable thing. I do want to prepare your heart for something though that I don't think many first-time gardeners are quite ready for. The point of seeing that first tiny tiny baby tomato on your plant and the point of eating it is way longer than you think and it is completely like magnified by your impatience and how much you really want it. It takes a while. Uh, it actually takes First the tomato grows to full size and then it, once it gets to its full size it sits there apparently doing nothing for a, a while and then eventually it starts to change color. Um, it actually takes about half the time for, between fruit set and picking the fruit. About half of that time is it growing to its full size and then another half of the time is it waiting to finish ripening. Uh, very, very much a hard thing to wait for, but I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do? You, I guess you can pick a green tomato, have fried green tomatoes if you just can't stand waiting anymore. But uh, eating that ripe fruit, it's just longer than you wish it would be. All these tomatoes that I'm are just now setting in my high tunnel, I would guess that I will probably be picking these ripe around the first to second week of July. It may be a little after that. It may be mid-July actually that we're picking ripe tomatoes out of the high tunnel. I could be wrong. So it could be it could go faster than that and it could take a little, a little bit longer, but that's just my guess. This gets asked a lot and I will end up repeating a lot of information in vlogs this time of year just because 
Um, that way everybody gets their questions answered. But this tie tape is what we typically use to tie up tomatoes. I've got several rolls of it. I get it on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below. It's not expensive. Um, it's just like a thin plastic and you just tie the plants loosely. If you do tie them tight, it stretches, but you just loosely tie them and they continue to grow up through that. I actually came in here to get my scissors. I just went on that whole long tangent about tomatoes. That is not what I came in here for. I don't see my scissors either, so. <laughs> oh, I remember where my scissors are now. I pruned these squash. I left a mess. Um, I pruned a lot of the leaves off my squash yesterday. Um, cutting off the bottom leaves, which I'll link uh, Danny from Deep South Homestead. He did a video talking about that. And I was just trying to provide some airflow because the powdery mildew was getting really bad. Uh, you can see it here, the damage from that. And this is actually some improved after yesterday. I also sprayed a diluted milk, like just whole milk, on them. And I diluted about 20% milk and uh, the rest water in a gallon. It's now, it's actually looking better. I feel better about looking at these squash right now. They were looking really rough. You can see kind of some of the powdery mildew. What powdery mildew will do, and it really is, it, it's caused uh, whenever you have really wet conditions and it spreads really quickly. And what it'll do is just kill off your foliage. And I cut off most of the worst of it in the underside, but you can kind of see here like stunted and killed off foliage. And then your plant can't grow because it needs leaves to um, catch the sunlight and to have energy and then your fruit will get scalded and all of that so this is looking some better I um, am going to do the milk thing again I did it yesterday morning and then it rained really hard yesterday afternoon which completely washed it off I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again here in a little bit and hopefully that will help I'm, I'm encouraged by the improvement that I see I feel like these plants could probably use a little bit more thinning here. I just was worried I was cutting too much, but you can kind of see here, this is still got that mildew. And these leaves are suffering. I also need to harvest these plants. Look at that squash right there. I see one right there. Look at all of that, isn't that crazy? I also started to see squash bug eggs yesterday. So I went through the best I could with all of these leaves and brushed those off and just hand picked them off. Um, but that means I need to be proactive and do something about that. I'm just not 100% sure yet what to do. Um, if you have any, tell me what you do for squash bugs. Honestly, the best defense that I've found is hand picking them and you just have to be super, super vigilant. I don't know how, um, I, I think that I can hand pick the best I can but there's just so so much right there so many plants I'm bound to miss some but I can try to stay on top of it I'm not supposed to be doing a garden tour I've got to film one today for this weekend but I just want to show you all the things look at them look at this this I think is that plum uh, sunflower that pro cut from Haas Tools. You can kind of see all the purple in the We'll know soon. This will be open in just a couple days and lots of these have little heads. Of course, they're not going to get super tall because they are cutting sunflowers, but they look really good. Is it nuts to you that that's like 40 days worth of growth? I think that's just crazy how fast that grows. Also, arches. Cool, huh? Look at this. That's like a legitimate potato. I'm very excited. <laughs> Look, there's another one. That one's big. <laughs> I can't believe it worked. Do you ever feel like that whenever it actually works? <laughs> Anytime you do something that you haven't done before. <laughs> I grew these. Okay, so I just pulled all the potatoes out from under one plant. Obviously, some of these are still small. And there were still a few, like, really small ones attached to the root of the plant. So, um, I'm going to leave the rest of them longer. Because clearly they need that. But this is really cool. It's working. It's going to be a lot of potatoes. Yeah, this is going to be a whole lot of potatoes. Yeah. 
these are the Adirondack blue. They're very purple. See, you can see the color better there. These are the Adirondack blue. I, I got this big one first, and that's why I kept digging, because I was like, man, that's big. But uh, this is the biggest one that was here. The skin is super thin. I'm gonna take these in and wash them and maybe stick them in the roaster oven for lunch. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good. All right, so if I had left these to get go a little while longer, uh, they probably would be bigger. But as is, I mean, I love little potatoes like this. So now that I know that they're getting to be this size, what we'll probably start doing is digging them out to use them as we need them. Um, especially right now, while our kitchen is torn out. Um, you know, I'm not trying to do any sort of like canning. If I can put it off for a couple weeks until we get it functional again, I will. Um, so we'll just dig these out and use them. I can cook them in the roaster oven. Probably in a couple weeks, they're gonna be dying back to the point that I need to start digging these out. Good, huh? <laughs> I'm very proud. <laughs> Oh, bear, did I leave you out? Actually dug a couple of the other kinds. Uh, eek, something buzzing around my head. Um, I just wanted to see where they're at. These are definitely smaller. Oh, shoot, I can't remember. One of these is Austrian Crescent, and one is something fingerling. Actually, I don't have to wonder about this because I took a picture to note, so I would remember. All right, Austrian Crescent and French fingerling. That's what these are than the blue Adirondack. Maya is back here working with the boys building some storage for his lumber and supplies. That was a creative use of those. You're gonna slide things through it and use like, like a rack? We're gonna use it to store all that extra tin. Oh, so we'll cool. Slide tin through it. That way we can pull the sheets out. Cool. This is an old bunk bed. Oh, cool. Very good repurposing, Maya. Hey, I dug some potatoes out. You want to see them? <laughs> Is that a little early? No, come look, for real. I mean, it's a little early. It may be, it's a little early, but it's not like crazy early. Right here. Oh, wow. That really did produce some potatoes. Yeah. That's not, e I pulled one whole plant out just to see what was underneath it, and then the others I just swiped from underneath a plant. Swiper, no swiping. <laughs> All the parents said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. All the, all the People who stopped raising kids more than, I don't know what, 15 years ago, they no. said, what? <laughs> hey, I was just coming down here to turn off the irrigation that I had running on a couple of the beds and I see some blushing strawberries. How cool is this? So like every day of our lives, we get up and show up and tell our farm that we love it. And then we get to this time of the year and it feels like the farm goes, I love you too. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yay. Found my scissors. I carried them up here on the front yesterday. My stuff is always all over the place. I want to show you guys one more thing, and then I'm going to put this video up so you can watch it and get back to work. So not only are we getting our kitchen in the middle of garden season starting to produce, uh, we have some friends coming in from out of town today. They'll be here tonight. We're super excited for them to be here. They bought pigs from us and we're gonna pick them up at the shindig, but obviously that didn't happen. And they're no strangers to home remodeling, so we're not stressed out at all. They're the kind of friends you can have in your house even when your kitchen's gutted, but I wanna show you this. This is wild. Oh my gosh, it feels so good in here. It's getting to be that time of year where you don't even have to have your air conditioner on that low and it feels amazing. So you see our, the lovely wallpaper, every inch of this house was covered in wallpaper when we got it and this was what was you know behind the cabinets and stuff. But uh, pretty, pretty intense change in here. It's real, we really haven't done that much. We've just cleaned everything out and started taking the cabinets down. They come down super easy. Uh, what we're actually about to do is start tearing out some of the bottoms. Um, we're leaving the sink in place with one small section of cabinet here, and we're leaving one section of countertop over here by the stove top, which still does work, to be able to use the roaster oven this weekend while we have friends here. And then Sunday, the rest of this is gonna come out and we're gonna 
really hustle to get it back in at least functional to get the sink back in um, and and at least somewhat functional and so we won't be completely without a working space for a little while this actually isn't nearly as uncomfortable as I thought it was gonna be but I, I grew up in a construction zone and so I'm just like okay well let's just adjust over there you have to walk a little further to get to the fridge but we're making it work Keeping, keeping our attitudes good. <laughs> I mean, how can you be upset when you're getting an awesome new kitchen and you just dug up awesome potatoes? We've got potato hands still. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'm gonna get this video up and I bless you until next time.